Okay, so what we currently have here is basically we have some shape tweening going on right here with the clouds. Notice if move that and some change in our color. We also have our classic uh, motion tweening, and that's this boat, the green boat right here, with a guide, uh, our own guide path that we drew, and then uh, just a regular motion tweening on this boat right here. And then we kind of modify the, uh, the motion path. And then the ocean in the background right here, okay? All right, so if you want to know how to do that, look at the previous video on, um, on how to do all this. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to add audio, and then we'll also um, add, we'll do some action scripting and add a button and create a scene, an extra scene. Right now we have scene one, which is this scene right here. So we'll start with the easiest one. Uh, we'll create a... Uh, or we'll add audio to uh, this movie. All right, or this animation, uh, movie or animation, you can call it either. Uh, so I'm gonna, going to go ahead and um, add a layer, move this layer all the way to the top. And then I'm going to call this one audio. And so I've already downloaded an audio from the internet um, with Animate. You can use MP3, Wave, um, background audio that I've downloaded. And so I'll use that. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to, in this case, since it's an audio, I'm going to import it to the stage. And then it'll also uh, be imported into my library. So I don't need to import the library. I could have imported the library and then just dragged it to the stage. All right. Oops. Uh, chose library. <laughs> Let's do that again. Import to stage. So I'm going to go and look for that. And here it is. Uh, Wave recognizes it now, and I'm going to click Open. And so now it adds it to my stage. Now notice when I move it back and forth, you can see the waveform right here. And notice when I move my playhead, I don't hear it at all. But then when I test it out, Command, uh, to test it out, I'll do uh, the shortcut key, Command, uh, enter or control return on a window system. Notice you can hear a plane, the audio on there. Okay, now if I pause it, notice when I pause this, it pause most of the animation except the movie clip. Uh, you'll notice that it continues uh, to play the audio. And what it will do, it'll continue to play towards the end. Alright, so uh, whatever amount of time it is. So it could be three sec three seconds or four more seconds or whatever, and then it will eventually stop playing. So in that sense, it's pretty easy to set up. Now, if you have, like, for instance, if you want to do, uh, you can change in terms of the properties in audio by just selecting it on, this, on the timeline here. And if you'll notice under effect, um, well, you could, uh, so that it only plays the left channel, right channel, fade in, fade out, and so on. But also under sync, that's where I meant to go, um, you could s change it to stream. Okay. And so now what will happen is that when I will play it, or move my playhead, you can kind of hear a little bit of what's playing in the background. So what will happen, as soon as it gets to... Uh, the last frame, it should stop playing. So let's test that out again. The other way I can go is under control, test. Notice it replays and watch when I pause it. When I pause it, it pause, doesn't pause the movie clip, but as you can see, um, it also paused the sound. Now when I go and play it again, it continues. Okay? But notice when it 
loops, it loops back, and the, loop, the player is looping back to frame one. So when it loops back to frame one, it restarts the audio. It doesn't continue to play the audio. So you have to decide how is it you're going to use. A lot of times you'll, um, you'll use streaming for making sure you sync that audio with the animation. Sort of like if you're having, uh, you know, if you're if if you have a character and you have some kind of mouth movement, you're trying to talk, have a talk, and you want to kind of sync a little bit that audio with the movement of the character's mouth. Okay, so that's when I would most likely use it. All right, but again, this is just, you know, simple introduction. All right, uh, so now we've added the audio. And so now what we want to do is create another scene and see what happens. All right, so the idea here is I'm going to create an introductory scene. And so you'll notice if I go to my slate right here, when I click on this, only shows up scene one and also we see scene one over here okay so I'm gonna to go to window to create that second scene I'm going to select window scene and so I'm gonna click on the this icon the add scene icon or the add icon and notice it creates scene two so here's scene two and then when I click here it goes to scene one all right. Now, obviously, if it's supposed to be an introductory page or just an intro type of uh, setting scene, uh, it should be the first thing. Right now, this is the first scene, and then it'll what we'll do. It'll play through and then go on to the next scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this. I'm going to select this in my scene um, window. I'm going to click and drag it up. So now scene two is my first scene. Then I'll just go ahead and change that into intro. And then boat. Okay. All right, so this is my intro scene and this is my boat scene. Now it's in the correct order. Now I'll notice, uh, using my text tool here, I'll just go ahead and type in welcome. And um, let's change this, make it a little bit bigger. And we'll change the color. And we can also change the font. All right. So when I test this out, notice what happens. I'll do command return again, and then notice we don't even see, or we briefly see it very quickly, right? Um, and that's because it's 1 24th frame, and so it's very quick in terms of, our, um, you know, it's not even one second, obviously. So we need to either extend this playtime you know, I could extend it out to two seconds if that's what I want. So I could just select frame two, for instance, and hit F5, F5 to uh, enter more frames. And then it'll play for a little longer, for a couple of seconds, and then it'll go on to the next scene. But what I want to do, I'm going to do this. What I want to do is actually um, add a button here. So we talked about adding a button. And then what I wanted to do is, is you know, for this, uh, to this open up, and then maybe you would have instructions on here, or you would have a little intro text type thing that you would write up on here. And then you would uh, have a button to go on to the next scene. All right. But before we do that, um, again, it, since it's only one frame long, I'm going to have a stop using action script okay so I'm gonna have it so I'm gonna show you how to use action script or basically programming on here now keep in mind uh, it's not not you know um, yeah I'm not gonna teach you how to program I will explain maybe some things but the idea here is that uh, we're going to add some programming in a very simple and hopefully simple way uh, for you
Okay, and hopefully you'll be on there, be able to understand it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, select layer one. Um, I'm going to go to window, and then I'm going to go to actions. Now, so here what we've done is I'll bring up my actions um, panel. I'm going to go ahead and dock it over here. And notice it says layer one, um, where there's layer the layer we're in, and frame one. So what I want to do here is I want to stop the move, uh, the playhead from going on to the next scene. Since there's only one frame, it there's no more frames after that it goes to the next scene. So I'm going to go, use my code snippets right here. Click on code snippets. Now, since we're putting a action on a frame, we're going to go to action script. Okay. And since I know that it has to do with the timeline navigation, we can look over here in terms of actions, some of the things that we could use it for, like stop a movie clip, show an object, uh, click to go to the web, you know, that kind of thing. That's like, you know, clicking a button, going to the, another website or another page, or another web page or something like that. But what we're looking for here is we wanted to stop at this frame. Okay. So I'm going to double click on it. And when I double click, the, you know, it fills it in right here in our window, action script window. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's look, check this out real quickly. So basically this text right here that's on here is a comment uh, that's been added for, for your, um, you know, for, for, for your, uh, just to educate you on, on what's going on here. And as you can see, it's, uh, it says stop at this frame. Um, and basically, basically it tells you it's just going to stop at this frame. And you can do this in most programming language by putting a forward slash asterisk and then asterisk forward slash between any text. And it won't include it as part of the script, but it'll be used more as a comment. And it's a good idea to get in a good habit of commenting sometimes your script uh, when you're you know writing something new or maybe just you need to pass off to another partner or something like that. Anyway, as you can see, that we have a what is called a stop action or a stop method and or function. You know the other thing in terms of programming, object-oriented program. This is this is what this is, and it's focusing. Object-oriented programming focuses on objects. Everything on the stage, including the stage itself, is, is can be influenced by programming. So the stage, we can change the size of it. We can do all kinds of stuff to change the color in the background simply using programming. Or we can, in this case, stop the playhead. Okay, so we've typed this in. This is already pre-scripted or pre-defined. Um, that's part of um, Animate in terms of the program of Animate. So now we'll go back to the timeline. And you'll notice that we have a lowercase a on here. Okay, so this lowercase a indicates to us that there's an action script. And notice it created once we, because we use the code snippets, it created this layer called actions. All right, so now let's test it out again. Let me move this up a little bit. Command return. And notice it doesn't move into the next scene. Doesn't the play doesn't move to the next scene. So now I need to add a button and I'm going to use action script to make it go to the next scene. Okay. So I'll use my rectangle tool. Uh, let's see, I'll change this to maybe three in terms of the stroke size. Um, here's my button. And then I'll just add start. Obviously, we'll change the color in here. Oops. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to change, I can change the size by grabbing here on the. Oops, no. Actually, can't do that. I'll change the size here. Okay. 
I use my arrow keys to move it in place. All right. Go ahead. Just move this out of the way. Okay. So now here's my button. I'll go ahead and select the text and the button, and then I'll make it into a symbol. So I can right mouse click, convert to symbol, or have hit F8, or select and modify the menu, and then convert to symbol. And so I'm going to select it, uh, make it into a button, not a graphic or movie clip. And so let's call it uh, start. Now, notice I put an underscore. So in programming, you usually, when you name your objects, uh, or yeah, basically when you're naming your objects, you most of the time do not want to put space. Not most of the time, anytime. You don't want to put any space in there. You can also do camel casing. So instead of uh, start underscore, I could do start this way. All right, so just to distinguish between the two words right there, right? Anyway, so I'll keep it that way. And lowercase, doesn't matter if it was uppercase, by the way, but anyway, that's how I name it. Um, obviously, I wanted to keep it short here. So um, we'll leave it as start BTM, indicating it's a button, and then make sure that under type is select the button, I'll click OK. And now in my libraries, we have also the start button. And, you know, as you can see, the audio file, the movie clip, and the boat. Okay. So now when I select it here, under properties, it should show up as a button. All right. So again, I want to be able to click it and go to the next scene. So I'm going to use my code snippets again. So in order to be able to use objects in... Action scripting and in some other program, object oriented programming language, um, you usually want to give that object a instance name so you can refer to it. Okay, remember it is an instance, by the way, on stage here. It's an instance, as you can see, of the start button. And here in the library, is a, it is considered a symbol, not an instance. And remember before in the previous video, I showed you I could drag a bunch of these. And they're all instances. And we would, if I wanted to influence each one of those, I would have to give each of them an instance name. So I'm going back to properties, selecting it, and then I'll give it a instance name. And I'll name it the same thing. Okay. So now it has an instance name. I have it selected. I'm going to go to window and actions and then by the way since i do have a selected when i go to the code snippets um if i go to um what i want to do is make it go uh click and go to see i could select this one and then i could that could be a specific scene that i could um uh, tell it to go to so if i had like three four different scenes May I wanted to jump to scene four, so then here would allow us to click on a button and jump to scene four. And we could specify in our code to go to scene four. In this case, though, well, I just wanted to go to the next scene because they're you know one two right. So I'm going to click to um, so like this, click to go to the next scene and play. And here it gives you a little yellow box, gives you a little more explanation too. So. By the way, in order to be able to make this work, we need to make sure we have selected the button, which I have. And so I'm going to double click. And then it knows to use the instance name. See, it uses the instance name right here. Uh, and then it, it uses this add event listener. Basically, it's just meaning it's a method that's. Um, paying attention or you know listening to um a mouse click so to, to a mouse event so event listeners are listening to an event and then it's listening specifically and you'll notice this is these these are uh, parentheses and this is considered a parameter so it's specifically listening to a click we could have changed this to a mouse over uh, a mouse down so any of those things would have worked too and it gave it a 
And by the way, you'll notice. So basically, it's it's uh, when we click on the button, it's listening on the benefit. There's a mouse click, and then it wants you to do this particular function. So I created a function name right here, uh, and we you can modify this to be to make it so that it makes more sense to you if you want. So I'm going to call it. Change this to boat scene. Okay, so you know it could be we could have left that name on there, but if and so this is the function, and then so I'm going to copy that command C, and I have to change it over here. If you notice, it was the same name. So basically, here is where I'm defining this function, which has a parameter. It's not going to void means it's not going to pass a return, and this in between these uh, curly braces is what I want it to do. So this is the action. So basically, I click on the button. It hears the press down on it, and then it does this function, which is it calls or calls up this function, which is right here, which we have defined right here, or in this case, the code snip is defined for us, which is saying. In this, uh, from this root, meaning from the beginning of this path, go to the next, uh, next scene. So, uh, so th that's what it's basically doing. So, this is again a function that's be been predefined, just like this function, whole function has been defined right here. And this, it knows, um, animate knows that it's supposed to go to the next scene that's right after that, after this scene. Okay. All right. So. Let's test it out. Notice when I put my cursor over this button, it becomes a thumb, and we'll go back and do an overstate and so on. But when I click here, notice it goes to our scene, and then uh, next scene, and then notice it kind of stops or uh, it, it plays the scene and then goes back to over here. Where we, if we wanted to do that, that's fine. But actually, I wanted to stop at the other scene, so. I'm going to fix that uh, now, but before I do that, I'm going to show you also. Oops, I undock that. Let's dock this over here again. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the functions of a button. So, um, the button itself, like a movie clip, uh, it basically is independent of. Uh, the, the the timeline of this button is independent of this main timeline right here. So I'm going to double click on this button, and now uh, you'll notice that it says up, over, down, and hit. These are the different states in a button. And so on the over state, basically, um, what we'll do is we'll insert a keyframe. But basically, the over state is when you put your cursor over it. And the down state is when you press down if you want to make it look different. And then the hit state is defines the area of that button. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna going to go ahead and select on the overstate, insert a keyframe, right mouse click, insert keyframe or hit F6. And I'm going to uh, do the same here, insert keyframe again. And basically, uh, the keyframes, as you can see, just redraws the button. So no difference, right? But so what we're going to do is obviously we're going to change that. I'm going to change the background. Notice, by the way, so when I've double clicked on it, I'm in the editing mode and I can't select anything else in the background. I'm in the editing mode of, <clears throat> of the button. So if I need to go back to the scene, I need to go back and click here or click this arrow. Okay. So I'm going to change this, just reverse the color. So I'm going to change this uh, to yellow. I'm going to select the text, change that to red. So that when I go over it, it should change to yellow and red. And I'll test it out real quick. I'll reverse the colors. Notice it does that. Now when I press down, it goes back to uh, the way it was, which basically is the down state. Now if I want that, I can change the colors and all that on here. And it's up to you. Okay. All right. So in the hit state, basically, um, if I'll hit um, just to, so you know if I hit F6 again insert a keyframe um, we don't have to have the text but oops, on here because it doesn't see this at all notice I'll get rid of it and it won't see the his state so if I test it out 
And, and you know, obviously everything still works, right? Notice this real quickly. If I move my head state down here. It doesn't work as a button. But notice when I put my cursor down over here. See? It does the rollover. And when I press down, it works. So keep that in mind. You can, you know, it's important to that. If it's a rectangle for the most of most of the time, it's fine to keep uh, just hit leave the over state or the down state. But if it's just the text text alone on the up state, that's usually when you want to um, use make sure you define the uh, area of your hit area for the button. Okay. All right. Uh, so okay, let's go back to scene two. And so here's where I'm going to add some action scripting, right? I'm going to select the top audio or top layer because I know I'm going to add the action script where I want it to stop at the end right here. Okay. So again, I'm going to go window actions. And we already know we're going to use a co snippets. And we you know we're going to just want it to stop it. And we're just going to stop at this frame. And there we go. And watch again. Notice I'll get rid of all this, and you'll see it'll still work because again, that that was just a comment, you know, that we don't need to um, necessarily use. We already know what it's going to do. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command Return one more time, I'll start it, and as you can see, it stops. The movie clips still keep going. If we wanted to stop the movie clip, we can also do that through action scripting. And we could do that uh, by going into, again, our actions right here. And there are code snippets, by the way, uh, to use that. But basically, um, I just wanted to show you in terms of, um, you know, how to create different scenes, use uh, audio. Do some scripting. Use some. Uh, also, show you how to use a button, uh, how to modify the button, and I think for now that is it. Alrighty, thanks for watching.